So let's dive into learning how to use the Amazon of China Taobao that literally sells almost anything you need at decent pricing. So first, let's go into making an account. Now, to make an account, you have to create an Alipay account. So you see this app right here, Alipay. I already have an Alipay account, but essentially you need to use your local phone number. Make sure it's a phone number with a SIM card, not a virtual phone number or an online phone number and have a passport ready to actually make an Alipay account. Once you've created that Alipay account, then I'll show you how to add the bank cards a little bit later. But that's a very important first step. Because once you actually finish making the account, then you can go into the next step, logging into Taobao. Because once you create an Alipay account, now you can sign into Taobao. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use a desktop and the mobile version simultaneously. I personally prefer to use the mobile version. It's a lot more versatile and user friendly. But here we go. We're going to show you how to use both of them. So if I'm logging in, through the mobile version, which I suggest you do this one first, and you'll see why just in a second. Make sure you download the right application. There may be fake applications out there, so you want to be careful. So if you go to the main website here, you want to make sure you click right here that says the phone version of Taobao. And this is very important because you want to go to the official website. So here, if you click on iPhone, you can scan this with your iPhone, Android, scan this with your Android. You have iPad version and also a Windows phone version. So when you're downloading Taobao, make sure you use the proper one. So I'm going to open the Taobao app on my phone and I purposely logged out. So it's either going to do one or two things. Here you can see that it brought me to the home page and then to log in, you want to click on me on the bottom right here. And then here it's going to ask for your information. You probably can't see it on the screen because it's censored, but it's going to ask if you want to log in via your Alipay account and you want to select yes. And then agree, which is the orange button. So just select the orange buttons and you're safe. So right now it's linking to my Alipay account and I say, I agree. I want to link it. And now I'm logged in to my Phone. But how do I log into the desktop version, you may ask? Well, it's actually very easy once you've logged into your phone. So here you can see like on the top here, it says my account information. So if I want to log in on the desktop, you can simply click on the top here. Like go to my cart right here. And in my cart, you'll be given an option to log in. Well, because I'm already logged in my phone phone, you can simply use your phone to log in. So here you either have the username or password, but I recommend that you log in using the QR code right there. So you see the QR code is an available option to log in. So how this would work is that on the mobile app, you go on the home page and click on the scan code here and you'll be able to see I am going to scan the code just like that and agree. Remember the orange button is usually the button for verification. So I agreed and it's recognized me in the system. And now I am logged in under my account. So here you can see I'm in my personal cart and now I am logged into my account on both the desktop version and the mobile version. Now let's talk about the layout of both platforms. So if you're looking at the mobile application on the bottom is pretty much your main commands. You have the Taobao. Then you have like the live streaming here or the product advertisements. Then you have the conversations. You have the supplier. You have your cart for any items that have been added. By the way, if you're logged into both the desktop and the app version, it's the same. They're synced. So if you add something in the cart on the mobile version, it'll be added to the desktop version. And then you have the me tab, which is pretty much your your after sales follow up um, when you buy products. But if you look at the desktop version, now I'm in the global global desktop version. It's different if you're in the, if you have a Chinese network, like if you're using a VPN like CyberGhost to get in the Chinese network, you can use that. But here you can see uh, most of your commands are on the top, unlike they are on the mobile phone where they're in the bottom, most of your commands on the top. So here you have my Taobao, which is pretty much your after sales. 
here's your cart. And then here's like your favorites if you wanted to add that. And if you're using Google Chrome and using a VPN, you can right click or select a, because I have the plugin or the extension activated, you can select the translate to English and then everything will be in English. So that's kind of a quick introduction. But now let's talk about finding products that you want to buy. So this is where I prefer the mobile version because if you use a desktop version, you're not in China, you're not going to have the search by picture function. But if you're using the desktop version, you can use the search bar here to search for keywords. The English is all right, but it's not ideal for this. But I'm going to show you how to use the mobile version because it's just easier to use in my opinion. So the search bar is on the top and you can either scan a code or upload a picture. I'm going to upload these pair of sneakers, and then you can see the different options they have. Now, when using the mobile version, it's very convenient to talk to the suppliers and get the information needed, but it's more convenient, in my opinion, to make the purchase on the desktop version that you see here. So I'm just gonna pick a random pair of shoes for some more information. On the top, there are filters, but if you don't know Chinese, it could be kind of frustrating, but you can filter it by distance, by location of factory, and by the cost that you're looking for. So I'm just gonna pick a random store. And then here you can see the different uh, running shoes that they offer. Now, if you want to ask a supplier more details, you can click on this little blue man here, and then you can just chat with them. Make sure you use Chinese, don't use uh, English when you're chatting with them to get the inquiry finished. And then they usually respond pretty timely. But when you want to add a product to the cart, which I always recommend you do, unless there's like a special event going on with coupons, Oh, there's two buttons in the bottom here. There's the orange button and the yellow button. To add products to cart, you click on the yellow button. And this is where you can see the different kinds of uh, certifications, not the certifications, but the specifications of the, the product that you're trying to buy. So you can see there's different colors here that you can select from and different sizing. Now, it's always good to confirm with the supplier what sizing chart they're using. Um, in this case, it's Chinese. I just recognize it. But you need to know, like, if you're drop shipping a product or you want to buy a product in the United States, these numbers don't match. They use, like, a different scaling. So you want to make sure you verify with the supplier. If I am a size 10 in the United States, what size is that in China? So let's say I like these green shoes. And I'm going to pick size 42. And then I'm going to click on the orange button here, which is add to cart, just like that. And you see it's been successfully added to cart. How do I know this? If I go to the desktop version and I click on add to cart here, you can see, you should be able to see the shoes I just added there. Look at that. Voila. Those are the green shoes that I added size 42. So those are the super easy ways to find products. I typically love using the image search versus using... Anything else? Yeah, you can type in keywords too in English, but in Chinese, you, you typically end up being better. So now let's go into adding the specific addresses. And I'm going to show you how to do them in both platforms, maybe simultaneously. Let's see if you can catch up. On the desktop version, you want to click on My Taobao. And if you're on the mobile version, you want to click on My Taobao on the bottom right. On the mobile version, there's a cog on the uh, top right and you wanna click on my receiving addresses. Now for this one, uh, you want to do address management, which will be right here, my receiving addresses. It looks just like this, my receiving addresses. And you'll see the addresses that are already on file. And if you wanna add a new address, you can put it on here. So it's pretty self-explanatory for both of them. And you can see all the addresses that have been saved here. If you want to add a new address, you just click on the orange button on the app. And what's cool about this is that if you copy and paste an address, the app will know if you have something on your clipboard and will automatically fill in the data. Make sure that when you put the address, you put everything in Chinese so it, can, it won't get lost in transition. But I really like that AI feature where it recognizes your, your clipboarded saved address address like you have it copied but haven't pasted it yet and it will automatically update it in the system so then you just you know ask your freight forwarder for the exact details of the address also if you want to make the address your default address it's called moren so here you can see this button right here if you check that that means you make that your default address so any addresses you put this will be considered your default address you can select this button right here to make it the default address on the more app so now that you know how to find the products and the address, how do you pay for the product? So let's go into 
the cart and finish the purchase with the shoes. And I'm going to be showing you how to do this simultaneously with both the desktop version and the mobile version. I prefer the desktop version a little bit better and I'll show you why. Select the item you want to purchase and then click continue. Now here is the cool part. On the top, you'll be able to select the addresses that you want to add either in the mobile version or the desktop version. Or you can even add a new address here if you haven't added it already. And what's cool about this is the different methods you can use to pay. So let's say I want to continue with this payment. Uh, if you scroll down the mobile app, I would suggest you keep on using uh, Alipay. This is the same Alipay that you used that you registered in the beginning of the video. And then you click on continue. So I'm going to use the, the desktop version first because there's a trick you can use to be able to pay with any bank card. So pay attention. So I'm going to continue with the transaction here and go with the default settings. Now it's going to go into Alipay and transition into different payment methods. But here's the important part. So I already have this link to all my bank cards in China, but you can choose a different method to pay. These are all Chinese bank cards, but what if you don't have a Chinese bank card? Well, you can add a bank card manually here. Your foreign bank card may work here if you want to put it. So you, you may have the option to use a foreign bank card. So pay attention to what I'm clicking. You want to click here, choose. You can use a local bank card, a credit card, or a foreign bank card. So I'm going to use a foreign bank card. I already have cards on file, but if you want to add a new one, you can simply go to add a new card and then put the card number details here. Note that there is some transaction fees that you need to be aware of. On average, it's about 5%. Just be transparent. You put your card number in here. And then you follow the process, make sure you put the name correctly. That is how you add a foreign bank card to buy products on Taobao. Now, this is only unique to Taobao. This won't work for platforms like 1688 or Pingdodo. There are ways around it, but this is for the most part on Taobao. If you want to add a foreign bank card on the mobile version, scroll down and then click here that says international payment method. Click there. And then it's going to tell you, you know, the exchange rates based on USD and the payments. And if you have any cards on file, it would just automatically get from that card. But if you don't, it's going to ask you if you want to add a card. And it's pretty much the essentially the same process that you just saw for the desktop version. I personally think the desktop version is more user friendly because you can translate the interface into English. And once it's translated into English, then you can follow the instructions clearly. So now let's talk about the after sale. So for both the mobile version and the desktop version, you want to click on my Taobao and here you see the after sale. So on the desktop version, it's all on the top. You have the, I haven't paid yet. Like those two that you just saw that I haven't finished the payment. I didn't go through with it. This is not paid yet. This one is paid, but not yet shipped. This one is shipped. And this one is arrived and awaiting for your uh, review. And then these are for any uh, refunds that you want to do. But that uh, if you want to go deeply into refunds, you can check out this video over here or I'll put it in the description below on going deeply into refunds because that's not what I'm going to be doing in this video here. So if you're using the mobile app, you just go to the me tab here and then the status is on the top here. So as I just showed you, there's two products that I haven't paid for yet. I'm going to delete those though. Then this is paid for already. This one is shipped. This is waiting feedback. And this one is returns and any refunds you do. So you can see it's pretty easy to use this platform and you can start using this like literally today on your own accord. But you're probably asking yourself, how can I find a shipping company in China? Because Taobao would only ship inside of China to be able to ship the product overseas to my home country. Well, you can check out this playlist that goes into detail about different freight forwarder companies that have different target markets like Africa, Europe, and the USA to help you ship the products overseas.